at about 95. He was almost still in 96 before he died. But while on the front roll of this diocese, his name will come the very last name. Because he wasn't actually trained. He was employed as a church worker because of the fact that that time personnel were not as many. It was quite serious, was assisted in the church, and there was plenty of workers. So he went some one Sunday to worship in one of the churches, and the person who was to conduct the service was not available. So they were just saying whoever can conduct should step forward. And it was actually a stranger there. So he went in, he conducted the service, and the people were impressed, they were happy, they were blessed. They then moved on, they moved, they went to the archdeacon or the no, the chairman of the, the district church council, then at St. Mary's in the Abuimushi, to request that we met a man who actually will be suitable for our assignments. If you don't mind, you can employ him. That was how he was employed into the church ministry. He, we were already growing, and then he would need sufficient money to look up to us. When he was given the privilege of going to the seminary for training, with the provision, with the condition that he would not be paid for those three years, he had to turn him down in order for us to be trained. Today, I stand as a bishop of this same houses. And I give all the glory, praise, and honor to the Lord who has made this happen. Father, we give you praise. Lord, we give you all the adoration. Blessed be your name, O God, in the name of Jesus. I like to thank my dear fathers in God who are here. I will not be able to go through all of them. There are over 35 bishops that are here in this church. But I'd like to quickly acknowledge the presence of our dear father, the Archbishop of Lagos and the Sisiku Province, and his dear wife, our mama, the most reverend doctor, Michael Olushin of Fakwe and Mama, Tony Fakwe. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, man. We are grateful. We appreciate your support. And I like to thank, with utmost gratitude, and our father, the most reverend, Dr. Shebo Ubadejo, the Archbishop of the Nibad of the Sisu Province. And I want to thank you very much for coming. We appreciate you very warmly. I I have the honor of recognizing and appreciating the presence of our dear father and the most trust son of this diocese, the erstwhile Archbishop of Lagos, Lagos and Successful Province, and Bishop of Lagos, the most reverend doctor. April Adebola Adebomo Amama Oluwati Adebomo. Thank you, sir. We sincerely appreciate you, sir, and my uncle Bobby. We'd like to thank our papa, the former Archbishop of Ibadan, and the sister who promised the most reverend doctor, J.O. Akimewa Amama Pofo. Akimewa, thank you very much, sir. We are most grateful for your love, support, encouragement, and prayers. I'd like to thank, in a special way as well, and the other the retired Archbishop of Kuala and the Shastical Province, the Most Reverend, and Mrs. M.O. Aki Yemi, the retired Bishop of the Gumi Odalsis. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, ma'am. The Lord bless you richly in the name of Jesus. All my fathers and God who are bishops, I like to thank you most warmly. And my hands are here. I will be going down through the list uh, very shortly, immediately after this message. I like to as well thank 
in a special way. Our mother, Mama Florence Awosoga, who is here, the wife of our dear bishop. Thank you very much. Sir. The Lord will bless you in the name of Jesus. Our real fathers are here, and I must tell you there are over 22 royal fathers present in this service. Let's put our hands together for them. I'd like to thank the paramount ruler of the whole land, His Royal Majesty, over Dr. Sikiru Ade Tono, the Awudale of the Land, who had mobilized all our royal fathers and encouraged them to be here with us in this service. And they are led here by no less than Alale Lua of Hawaii, Ade Poya, OOA, the Dagure way of Idoa, representing His Royal Majesty. Papa, thank you very much. Look for this soon. I got you at the bottom. I left for a while. Okay, you can be seen while look for this soon. It's a good one. I'm on you. Okay, I'm not going to be at the bottom. I will be going through the list shortly after this sermon. I like to also. Recognize and welcome in a special way the Ashwa Jodi Baba of the Bulans, the Ulori Baba, and Mama, or to my Dr. Michael, or Lassu, the Babalogo, and the Ulori Abibola Babalogo. The welcome in the name of Jesus. I like to welcome very warmly my dear Father in the Lord and my mentor. In the ministry, the Venerable MP Nisa Baba Tunde Abiala and Mama Lola Abiala. Thank you very much, sir. The Lord bless you richly in the name of Jesus. There are several Abiala descendants that are here. I want to thank God for all of you. You are all warmly welcome. We have an Olori MP who is actually present there with the clergy. Thank you very much for coming. I'd like to welcome to this service my senior brother, Pastor Dr. Michael Shegun Oludipe, and his amiable consort, Dr. Mrs. Yemisi Oludipe. The two of them came in just to be part of this service. And providentially, today, my senior brother turned 60. Today is his 60th birthday. Praise the Lord. He is a pastor with the New Covenant Church in Manchester, United Kingdom, with his wife. Thank you very much for coming. The Lord bless you and continue to bless your ministry in the name of Jesus. I have another younger brother who, although he's not here, but will be with us online now, is uh, also a pastor with the Redeemed Christian Church, Pastor. Tony Oludipe and his wife, Dr. Mrs. Larry Oludipe. They are with us online with this service. I'd like to also welcome, in a special way, my father in law, Mr. Kyle Dibangelu, is here with us in this service. Thank you very much, sir. And his immediate brother, His Royal Highness, of Michael Adeshino. Today is of uh, Michael Adesino's birthday. Papa too is celebrating his birthday today. So happy birthday to you, sir. After the service, rice and soup will be very plenty in the palace. I can assure you that. I like to acknowledge all my heroes, Dr. Carl Evangelio, his wife, Mr. Tola Evangelio, his wife and children. They are all with us online because they are not in the country. I want to thank all of you for being part of this service. The younger brother to my father, the big uncle and cousin, Paeso Ogudipe, is over 19, 93 years. You're welcome, sir. He's the immediate younger brother of my father. The two of them are siblings of the same parents. God bless you in Jesus' name. I'd like to 
Welcome all my brothers in the house of clergy of this diocese and their wives. All of you are special. May the Lord bless you tremendously in the name of Jesus. I want to say to you that you occupy a special place in the service of the master in this diocese. You are God's battle axe and you are a sealed weapons of war. You will not lose your reward in the name of Jesus. All sons and daughters, illustrious sons and daughters of the Jebu diocese who have come from far and wide, you are all welcome. God bless you in the name of Jesus. I like finally to acknowledge my wife and prayer partner, Dr. Mrs. Bikola Olodipe. Thank you very much for being a dependable ally. We've been married for over 25 years. I want to thank you and thank God for you for being there. The Lord will continue to renew your strength. In the name of Jesus. All the good people of the Buddha house is home and abroad. Particularly those who are joining us online because this service is being transmitted live by the Anglican Cable Network. The ACNN of the Church of Nigeria is transmitting this service. And also several other social media of the Cathedral of the Buddha Anglican Diocese are transmitting this service as well. I pray that all of you, wherever you are joining us for this service, the Lord will bless you in the name of Jesus. Shall we please bow our heads as we pray? The Lord, we give you praise and honor because you are a faithful God. As we go into the scriptures, open our eyes of understanding that we behold wondrous things out of your law. Let your blessings be the portion of each one of us. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Dear people of God, there is no doubt that today marks another milestone in the annals of history of this great diocese as we are enthroned the fifth bishop of the Jebu Anglican Diocese. We praise God for the work and witness of all our predecessors in office and particularly our immediate past bishop, the late Right Reverend Dr. E. Ayo Awoshoka who labored tirelessly for the advancement of Christ's kingdom in this land. We pray that the blessing of the Lord will continue to be with his family that he left behind in the name of Jesus. I actually worked very closely with him in the last 10 years when I was appointed the provost of his cathedral. We sincerely appreciate the commitment, the dedication, the steadfastness all the servants of God who have labored in this Yebu land since the creation of this diocese 44 years ago. My prayer is that the blessings of the Most High will rest upon all of us as we continue to labor in His vineyard in the name of Jesus. As we take over the pattern of leadership of this great diocese, it is our resolve to be more committed to the preaching of the gospel much more than ever before. This is simply because the gospel is the power of God for salvation to those who believe. The scripture made us to know that God created man in his image, placed man in the garden of Eden, Genesis chapter 3. All that man needed for his comfort and welfare were provided. However, out of disobedience, man sinned. And he was sent out of that comfort soul in the Garden of Eden. But God, out of his benevolence, made an arrangement for the salvation of mankind through the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Since the event of the fall of man in the Garden of Eden, the major problem between God and man is the problem of sin. And the Bible is so clear and emphatic about it that Jesus Christ is the only permanent solution to the problem of sin is the only mediator between God and man. Down the ages, there is no human invention, no knowledge that has been able to help man over 
overcome the problem of sin, the void and the hopelessness created by sin cannot be filled by technology. Saint Augustine of Hebrew declared, Thou hast made us for thyself, and our hearts have no rest until the prince is rest indeed. Because the COVID 19 pandemic that ran in the world in this, the first half of this year, and the second wave is already becoming a matter of concern in several countries of the world today, as to a large extent, make all mankind to know that without God, we are nothing. Several of our brightest and best have been swept away by the pandemic. Our prayers is that the Lord will comfort all those who lost their loved ones in the name of Jesus. And, it, and those who are still in the isolation centers, the Lord will grant to them speedy recovery in Jesus' name. Indeed, it is not of him that run it, of him that will it. It's of the Lord that show a blessing. Romans 29, verse 16. The team. I have chosen for this amazing message that God our sister is in the book of Isaiah chapter 16 verses 1 and 2 it says arise shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you for behold the darkness shall cover the earth and give darkness to people for the Lord will arise over you and his glory will be seen upon you. There is no doubt that the demise of our former vision is not to destabilize all of us, to make us complacent as a doubt, to make us feel very we more prepared. But today, just like the Lord spoke to Joshua after the death of Moses, in Joshua chapter, chapter 1, verses 1 and 2, God told Moses, told Joshua, that Moses, my servant, is dead. Jehovah arrives, you and these people, and take them to the land that I'm giving them to possess. So today, I've come to declare that same mandate of God to all of us good people of the Jehovah's Witnesses that it is time for us to arise and to shine because the Lord has something great in store for all of us. There is a future for us, particularly in the work of the Lord. There are more plans to be covered in these houses. Several people are yet to know the Lord as their personal Lord and Savior. There are so many that have become backsliding. Many are already cold in the face. Many are following in the deep pit of sin. Many are fast asleep in the darkness of sin. And no man can remain in sin and expect the place of God to abound. The Bible says, No way. It is only as we are away from the life of sin that we can experience the transformation that God planned for us. When we fail to arise, we are then be stagnant, we are on the same spot. And when we are on the same spot, we are not making progress. And you will be collected at the stagnant water. It's a breeding place for all and all diseases. God does not want us to remain on the same spots. A lot of people have been thrown off balance by the COVID 19 pandemic. Many have lost their faith in God. But I've come to declare today that it is not yet over for you. God will make a way for you in the name of Jesus. Today, it is time to break yourself loose from the shadows of sin and arise. Each of us will arise from the own life of sin. And 
and surrender the leadership of our life to Jesus Christ and be properly born again. The intention of the enemy is to keep men in darkness. And anyone in darkness does not know where he is or where he is going. He is confined and limited to one spot. In all this number. Don't allow the devil to continue to cover your glorious destiny. It is time to break forth in the power of the Holy Spirit. A lot of people are just existing because they have no purpose for living. And you should know that life without Christ is meaningless. It is a life that is full of crisis. Many are running the race of life on one spot. Many lack destiny helpers because they continue to live in sin. There are many people today who are held down by the forces of darkness because they do not know about the glorious liberty that God has promised His own people when He surrendered their lives to Him. Today, I declare every power of darkness covering your life, preventing you from shining and showing for the glory of God, they are destroyed in the name of Jesus. To shine means to be distinguished. It means to stand out of the crowd. It means to be honored. It means to become a tester, even among your peers. Every veil of darkness covering you, covering your family, your business, your children. Today, we command the fire of the Lord to consume them in the name of Jesus. Yeah. If you are still following in the darkness of sin, it is time to repent. Today is the day of salvation, so tomorrow will be too late. Give your life to Jesus. Accept Him as your Lord and Savior. And life will become meaningful. God will shed His light on a part of your life. And things will take a new turn. Today, as we begin our episcopal journey in this diocese, this great diocese of Ijebu, we declare by the Spirit of the Lord, lift up your hands on the gates of Ijebu land, and the King of glory will be coming. Leave 
as children of light. Romans chapter 13, verse 12. To my brothers in the house of clergy, we cannot afford to be at ease in Zion. We must be on guard and do the work for him. That told us why it is day. Because the night comes when no man shall walk. John chapter 9, verse 4. The Lord Jesus Christ declared to the disciples that I must walk the work of him that comes to me when it is day. Because the night is coming when no man shall walk. You have a special assignment to their brothers in the house of Christ. Which angels are not permitted to do? Only human beings can preach the gospel. And that's the honorable assignment that we have from our master. We must put in our very best. We must not, we must all remember that the eternity of men and women are at stake. Let me say, or put it categorically, that what you preach or fail to preach to a large extent will determine where those who listen to you will spend their eternity. What you preach or fail to preach to a very large extent will determine where those who constantly listen to you will spend their eternity. The eternity of men and women are stake. That all of us must arise in all of sitting down to the face. The Lord has called us with a holy calling. We have an assignment from the Master to fulfill. And time is not on our side. My prayer is that on the last day, when the Lord will, call up, will be called up yonder, the Lord will count all of us worthy in the name of Jesus. And for those of us who are pastors, the Lord of men and women will not be required at our hands in the name of Jesus. All our members in the house of Haiti, we can no longer continue to sit on the fence. Simon we take a stand for Jesus. In all of praying church, in all of people I trust in church, because they want to belong. Some are in church because when they have social functions, they want to have a church that will be able to render that service to them. The purpose of the church is for the salvation of your soul. If you are not born again, if you are not genuinely converted, you need to seek the face of God. You need to go to the Lord in the place of prayer and surrender your life to Him and tell the Lord, Here am I, have your way in my life. I pray that the Lord will grant unto each of us that personal encounter that will turn around our lives around for His own glory in the name of Jesus Christ. Don't allow the death of Jesus to be in vain over you. Don't allow the enemy to have the final say in your life. All of us who are Christians, who have been baptized, confirmed in the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, have been called into a new life. A life of righteousness, a life of holiness. Therefore, you cannot afford to continue to live in sin. Because sin will destroy you, ultimately, you will take you to hell. And I must say to us God is no respecter of any person. If you are not born again, if you fail to surrender your life to Jesus, and you close your eyes in death, your eternity is sealed. It has little to do with the number of priests 
of bishops that attend your funeral. In death, you can no longer change your eternity. Therefore, before you die, give your life to Jesus. That's why you're in church. Live for him and let people see Jesus in the way you live, the way you conduct your life every day. I pray that the Lord will help each of us in the name of Jesus. To all our youths, I want to encourage you to be more and doing. Together, we are going to take the gospel of Christ to the roots and places of this land. We are going to shake this land with the gospel of Jesus. And I'm trusting that the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. We are going to possess this land for Jesus. And we are very able to do it because the Lord is on our side. God, my name, may I say, we will arise. We will build because the Lord is on our side. My prayer is that the Lord will count each of us worthy of these great assignments to which He has called us in the name of Jesus. Today, as we come to mark the inauguration of the ministry of our new mission, let there be a new resolution in your hearts to live for Christ. To live the life that will bring glory and honor to Him alone. Because the night is coming when no man shall walk. Together, we are going to take this song in the to provide him book and allow us to see. Media should please display how she shared, how she shared. Oh, my Lord, only one. I like us to sing it as a song of rededication and a commitment. Say to the Lord that we are available. Let him have his way in our lives. We are going to make ourselves available for his service. We will no longer sing on the face. We will be put in our very best. Because the time, time is no longer on our side. Shall we sing, please? Yes. 
us as we pray. Father, we thank you for the word that you sent to us. Thank you because of the power that is in your word. Today, we come to make a fresh commitment to you, asking, oh God, that we have your way in our lives. In the name of Jesus. We soak ourselves in the blood of Jesus. Areas where we have not lived up to your expectation. Have mercy upon us, O God, in the name of Jesus. Cleanse us and put us in the name of Jesus. Wash us clean in the name of Jesus. As you have taught us with this holy calling, Father, make us to be worthy of your call in our lives, in the name of Jesus. None of us will fail you. We will not disappoint you. We will not let you down. In the name of Jesus. The flesh will not rule us. The flesh will not dictate to us. Father, we shall follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. Your name will be glorified in our lives. We ask that you have your way in our analysis. And let your name continually be glorified in this analysis. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We praise, worship, and adore you. Blessed be your name, O God. For those, O God, who are yet to surrender their lives to you, Lord, as they go from here, Father, we pray that their hearts will not find rest until they are fully surrendered to you in the name of Jesus. You will grant unto each one a personal encounter in the name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father. Blessed be your name, O God. In Jesus mighty name we have prayed. Yeah. As we take the next set of hymns, we shall take the offering for this service. Mm -hmm. 